Okay, so next we have bar chords. We're going to take some of these open chords and we're going to move them, we're going to turn them into bar chords. Okay, it's important that you learn how to visualize the motion of the guitar this way because the cage is going to be moving all over the place. So again, if you have the bar chords already memorized, that's awesome. You could watch this and just pick up any tips that I might be able to help you with. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we have to understand is that when we play guitar, for instance, when we first start learning how to play, we learn A and D and all these chords in the open position, we call it. We call it the open position because we're using strings that are open. We're not pressing on them. Okay, so we learn how to play these chords and we learn how to play, you know, some typical rock and roll songs or country folk songs or whatever it might be using these chords. Now, my first experience with that was then, well, what I could do was if a song was in the wrong key or it had chords I didn't know, I could use a capo and clamp it onto the guitar and then I could play my open chords behind that capo, which works great and, and many artists use that and uh, it's still a tool that we, we would consider using. But it doesn't solve all the problems, okay? So if you think about what a capo is actually doing is, it's essentially just shrinking your guitar, okay? If I play a C chord here, which is where it belongs, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to capo at the fifth fret. So I, I clamp a capo on the fifth fret right here. Well, then what I would need to do then is I would play C behind the capo right here. And then the rest of this guitar is useless. I can still use this, but the stuff down there isn't going to work at all. Okay, so I would clamp my capo right here at the fifth fret and I could play C or G or D or anything like that. And now my pitches are higher. Maybe they match my voice um, or it makes the song easier for me to play because I don't know all my chords or whatever it might be. But that's the premise behind a capo. Okay, and a capo can be moved anywhere. Once you clamp that capo, you just play all your open chords behind the capo. Okay, so the big thing is is from here then, what we want to do is we want to start learning how to alleviate the capo to expose the entire fretboard, okay? Not just, you know, from the capo on. So here's what happens is we can actually start using our first finger as the capo. So I want you to watch this. Again, if you've already done bar chords, um, you know, just follow along and, and let me see if I can help you a little bit with some of the setup. So first things first, make me an E chord. So we got that E chord sitting right there. What I want you to do is I want you to take that E chord and I want you to refinger it using, instead of using one, two, and three, you're going to use two, three, and four. Okay, two, three, and four. So I'm going to put my middle finger on the first fret of the uh, third string. And I'm going to put my ring finger on the fifth fret, or excuse me, the fifth string second fret, I'm sorry. And then I'm going to put my pinky on the fourth string second fret. So I'm still making an E chord, but I'm making it with these three fingers. Okay? And the purpose of this is, is to get my first finger free. Now it's not part of the chord. So I can now take that E chord, I can move up a fret, and I can bar across all six strings. So what's essentially happening is I'm taking the E chord, the notes that I am pressing on for an E chord, and I'm moving them up the guitar. But the problem with doing that is, is that the three strings that are not being pressed on, they're not going anywhere. So as I move, it doesn't work. So if I take my first finger and I clamp it like the capo would, okay, across all the strings, I am now taking those strings that were open and I'm moving them up along with the notes that I was pressing on. So I'm essentially making my first finger a capo and it's just moving up. Okay? Now, if you've studied bar chords before, you realize that bar chords really are the essence of guitar playing because they free you from being in the first position down here just playing, you know, C and A and D and all those things that really have no continuity. You know, they, they're all different shapes and all those sorts of things. And some strum five strings, and some strum four strings, and some strum six strings. Well, with this bar chord idea, we can strum everything all the time. Okay? So that's the first thing I want you to get used to, is understanding how E could be made into a movable chord by barring in front of the E chord shape. Okay, so you start practicing, you just practice trying to get comfortable with moving that around. Okay, 
And just like the other chords I was talking about, you practice those three techniques, visualization, bouncing, and clarity, okay? You want it to be fast. The way to make it fast, the way to move fast, is to practice seeing it and see it in your head. Bounce it. Pick your fingers up, set them down. Pick your fingers up, set them down. And the last thing is, is always make sure that you're checking all your notes to make sure they're all functioning. Okay? We call this a sixth string bar chord. And the reason we call it that is because we're eyeballing the sixth string. Okay? So for instance, when I make an E chord, the lowest note of my chord, if I make an E chord, should be an E. That's why they call it an E chord. So if you played piano and you went up to a piano and you were going to play an E chord, the lowest note, which would be your thumb, should be an E. Okay? That's, we're doing the same thing. So if you think about it, this note right here is my lowest note. So when I play an E chord, that note is E. Okay? So when I move it into a bar chord, my lowest note is still going to be up here. So the great thing is, is let's say we're going to make a bar chord of the fifth fret. We would move to the fifth fret. We would eyeball the fifth fret. We would bar over that, barring over the sixth string on down. And then I'm going to make this E shape with these three fingers. Okay. I'm just going to move it wherever I want to go. So that is your sixth string bar chord. Okay. The next thing we have to learn is the A shape, or what we refer to as the fifth string bar chord. Okay? So what happens with the fifth string bar chord is I'm taking the A chord, just like I did the E chord, I'm taking this A chord, and I want to move it around the guitar. I want to move it up the guitar. But in order to do so, I need to move those open strings up with me as well. Well, I can't do that. So I need a capo. So again, instead of using a capo, I'm going to use my fingers. So instead of playing A with these three fingers, if you play it like this, you're going to play A with your second, third, and pinky, okay? You're going to press on those three strings with those three fingers like this. And then what you're going to do is you're simply going to move up a fret, and now you're going to bar over the bottom five strings, the bottom five. You're not going to play the sixth string. You don't need to push on it. You certainly don't need to strum it. You're just going to strum those bottom five. And now this becomes movable. Now, if you've ever played a fifth string bar chord before, you already know that it's very difficult to fit these three fingers in there. I'm a smaller guy, so it, my fingers are even having a hard time fitting in there. So if you have bigger fingers, it's important that we find a different way of pressing on these three strings. The unfortunate thing is, is most people then have to make it like this. They take their third finger and they press on those three strings of the A chord at the same time with their third finger. So what makes this kind of difficult then is this first string, okay? Because you don't want to touch the first string with your ring finger, but you do want to touch it with the bar. So you got to kind of kink that finger up a little bit. You kink that, that ring finger up. That way you can press on the fifth string with this, fourth string with this, third string with this, second string with this, but then first string with that. It took me a long while to get used to being able to play that fifth string bar chord effectively. So again, just do the best you can with your practice. But understand that now what's happening is we're taking that A chord and we're moving it up the guitar with this built-in capo that we have, which is our first finger. So we now can move an E chord anywhere we want to go. And we can move an A chord, which again is these three, but I'm using this finger, anywhere we want to go. So here's the question I get from, from students all the time. Well, why can't you move the D chord up and down? Well, you can. That's the concept of caged. Why can't you move the C chord up and down? Well, you can. Again, that's the concept of caged. When I'm teaching students about bar chords, there always comes a time where they'll kind of figure out, they'll say, okay, well, I can play a D, and we'll get into this in just a second. I can play a D bar chord up here on the 10th fret of the sixth string but I can also play D on the 5th fret of the 5th string. Which one should I use? Or I can play D as an open chord. Which one should I use? And the answer is always use whichever one you want. Whichever one you seem, uh, whichever one you think is, is the most applicable in terms of its sound, and also the one that seems to fit you in terms of what you're interested in playing. A lot of times when I play songs, you know, if the song is a fairly straightforward song that uses D, C, and G or something like that, I don't just sit and play D, C, and G because 
I just want to do other things. I want to have some more fun with it. And that's where I like moving around the fretboard, which is what these two bar chords are doing for you. Okay? So you can see how these open chords are slowly mor morphing into this cage system now. We've got an E shape that we're moving up and down the guitar, and we've got an A shape that we're moving up and down the guitar. So needless to say, the next step is to learn the C shape and the G shape and the D shape, and then learn how they connect together, and then learn how to use them effectively. So that is going to be the next part. Uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to practice that E and that A shape until they become fairly comfortable, and then let's move on to the next segment.